Um, that was such a silly answer. Gary leaves the My first real experience with direct politics happened straight after my father's death. My dad died in 96, two years after democracy because of his involvement in taxis. My mother at the time, obviously a widow, was distraught and we had moved to the suburbs but still wanted to give my, my father a proper ancestral and cultural send off. And so we slaughtered two cows in our backyard in the suburbs. And naturally, at that time in South Africa, it was quite taboo and unheard of. And our neighbours, you know, to put it lightly, didn't take kindly to it. And it caused quite a lot of commotion in our community and in then. A man came to our house, and my mom was very distraught, and offered to speak on behalf of our family. I didn't know at the time, but later would discover that that man was Roger Burrows, who was a DP member of provincial legislature and to hear the stories of what he said about my family and what he did for my mother during that time to me has always been something that has really made me feel a very strong connection to the democratic alliance but then the democratic party essentially roger barrow is a man who didn't know my family spoke on our behalf about the constitution and about how the new South Africa had to allow all creeds, all cultures and all South Africans to be able to live together and coexist. And to me as a young person that was incredibly powerful to think that a person could speak on behalf of other people who essentially didn't have a voice and to really then create some change. And so I think, you know, in some ways Roger Barrows is the reason that I really got into politics because he showed me that an ordinary person could do that for other people and could be a hero and anyone that knows my love of comic books knows my obsession with heroes. <laughs> well I, I do a lot of things now, I have my own business and I've just become a director of another company and I'm very interested in seeing how far I can push the boundaries of my own ingenuity in the sort of business world. But I do feel that I want to be a part of politics and the political discourse in this country for quite a while, maybe another 20 years. I think that we're in a very interesting time and have very interesting dynamics happening now and I'd be a fool to leave, you know, the political scene at this moment. You know, I think that men have had a very long time to run the world and we haven't gone very far. I'm a radical feminist, so I think that women need to be taking more of a seat at the table. Um, and you know, I, I think that we need a different approach and I think that women need to be making sure that their voices are heard at decision making bodies. And people always say, you know, well, what's going to be so different because we have so many people, um, you know, in various positions now. The fact is that's not enough. We need to be capacitating women and not just allowing them to be there because we say that we want them to be there. We need to have a radical change and some sort of revolution in the way that society views what we are. If half your population is not able to make proper decisions about how the country should be run, how their homes should be run, how they should be protected, then I think that says a lot about the future of that nation and I don't think it's a very good one. A great part of what I do politically is also to mentor young girls. I take it very seriously and I try to be involved as many different sort of gender equity commissions, talks, panel discussions, um, because I see the great importance and it's something that I think needs to be happening. Um, and so yeah, I, I, I consider it a very big part, if not the biggest part of also what I do as a strategy.